It was a warm summer's day when Brenda Delgado received an email from her former boyfriend. The two had been happily dating for a number of years. Ricky had even given her a promise ring. Detectives say that in February of that same year, Ricky decided to break things off. He just wasn't happy anymore. The two remained friends and by June, Ricky sent Brenda an email announcing he'd finally begun dating someone else, a lovely young woman named Kendra Hatcher. The only problem was, while Ricky had happily moved on with his life, Brenda, well, she hadn't. Hearing this news was devastating, and investigators say that Brenda vowed to get Ricky back no matter the cost, and she was willing to take down anything and everyone who stood in her way. In September of 2015, Kendra's life was about as perfect as she could have ever imagined. She'd been growing up and earning her wings as a dentist in Pleasant Plains, Illinois, and she moved to Dallas, Texas to get a fresh start. While most people with a dentistry degree would jump at the chance of opening their own practice after their long years of study, in contrast, the choices that Kendra made revealed a lot about who she was as a person. Instead of setting out on her own, she joined an organization known as Smile Zone, where she would provide children from less advantaged homes with high quality dentistry. And she knew that here, she could make a difference in her community. Even when she wasn't bettering the lives of the disadvantaged, Kendra would use much of her spare time teaching people about the Bible. And she even joined a program that focused on building churches in other countries. If this wasn't great enough, the organization even offered free dental services to children living in Ecuador. It's safe to say Kendra was a very selfless person who always had the best interest of others in mind. But earlier that year in May, her life had gotten even richer when she met a man named Ricky Paniagua on Tinder. And by September, the couple had fallen hopelessly in love. Kendra's home was located in an upper class part of Dallas, specifically on Gables Park 17, on the corner of Cedar Springs and Ackerd. It was a place where she felt at ease since there were plenty of security cameras watching the property, along with a 24-hour concierge service. Residents even had access to secure parking in a heavily monitored parking garage. Ricky was also doing well professionally, as he was in the midst of completing his dermatology residency at the University of Texas. And he and Kendra had gone as far as discussing marriage, despite only dating for four months. Now, this may seem early, but they found that they were a perfect match with similar morals and their ideals very much aligned. In essence, they thought of themselves as the perfect couple. Kendra was described as kind, beautiful, and always willing to lend a hand to anyone in need. She worked hard to create the life that she was living and poured her heart and soul not only into her work, but into her relationship with Ricky. But as is so often the case, one person's success and happiness can cause untold strife for someone else. Jealousy is a bitter pill to swallow. Unfortunately, this jealousy led to a tragic crime that would change Ricky's life forever and end with Kendra losing hers. On Wednesday, the 2nd of September, Kendra had finished her shift at Smile Zone and headed home to Gables Park 17. She was looking forward to the weekend since she and Ricky had made plans to travel to Mexico for Labor Day, which is a holiday for workers here in the US. She was super excited at the prospect of discussing plans for she and Ricky to move to San Francisco when they got back. But she could never have foreseen what would happen next when she arrived at her building at exactly 7.42 p.m. After arriving home, she drove her car into the secure parking garage and parked in her usual spot. But just minutes later, Two witnesses who were present in the garage heard a woman screaming, followed by the blood-curdling sound of a firearm being discharged. A fellow resident at the complex, a man named Hashem Sa'ad, also heard the same sounds and instantly knew something was wrong. He called 911 and reported what he'd heard, despite not knowing exactly what had happened or who was involved. But before he did so, witnesses saw a Jeep Cherokee leaving the parking lot at full speed though they weren't certain whether it was connected to the alarming sounds that they'd heard or if someone was just in a hurry. The police were quick to respond, but no amount of haste could have changed what they found at the scene when they arrived. When detectives finally made it to the scene of the crime, Kendra had unfortunately already lost her life. Prior to this, there was no suspicion that anyone had any ill will towards Kendra. After all, who could? She was near about as good of a person as any of us could hope to be. 
When investigators began looking around the scene of the crime, they quickly noticed that her purse was missing. Her purse couldn't be found in her car or anywhere in the garage, so it was quickly assumed that she'd been robbed and that the crime had somehow gone wrong, resulting in her assailant ending her life. Close to the area where she was found, a handgun magazine was collected for evidence, along with shards from its ammunition. But when investigators started processing the scene further, they uncovered some very shocking clues. As more and more evidence was collected, they were now of the opinion that this crime was planned. They believed the scene was staged to look like a robbery, and this was evident from GSR residue that was found on Kendra's hands, indicating that she had her hands behind her head at the moment that she was fired at. Furthermore, the path that the bullet had taken suggested her assailant was standing behind her when they fired the shot, and that she was on her knees, likely having been forced to kneel, which isn't something that happens during a typical robbery. Cops were at a loss as to who would put this innocent woman through such awful torment. It just wasn't fair. But for the assailant, everything was going to play. After clearing the scene of the crime, detectives had the unfortunate task of breaking the news to Kendra's boyfriend, Ricky. Ricky was understandably devastated at the news, and later that night he sent a text message to his former girlfriend and longtime friend, Brenda Delgado. Brenda was shocked to hear the news of Kendra's passing, and she vowed to be there for Ricky any time, day or night. As the investigation into this baffling crime continued, investigators looked at security footage from Kendra's building, and they were immediately presented with a fair amount of evidence regarding the Jeep Cherokee that was seen leaving the garage immediately after the shots were fired. It showed the vehicle arriving at the building at 7.15 p.m., 28 minutes before Kendra drove into the garage. Footage inside the garage captured a man who could be seen walking towards the area where Kendra's car was parked and he would then be seen returning to the Jeep just a short while later. Investigators were certain that this man was responsible for the crime, but they didn't recognize him or the Jeep that he was seen in. It would then come to light that the man hadn't acted alone, as a woman could be seen driving the Jeep mere moments after the man got back in, and it had become clear that this incident had been planned well ahead of time. Footage of the scene wasn't clear enough to identify the two suspects or to see the Jeep's license plate number. And so, investigators decided to release still images of the security footage to the public, along with an appeal for anyone who recognized the couple to come forward. In these types of circumstances, it's often the case that these bids for information go unanswered, either because no one can identify the suspects, or because people are simply too scared to come forward for fear that they might be retaliated against. But in Kendra's case, the exact opposite was true. Very soon after this information was released, Jose Luis Ortiz came forward with a startling confession that the Jeep in the footage was his, but he was adamant that he was not present when the crime was committed, and that he had no idea that his car would become the focus of a true crime investigation. Now, normally, investigators would be skeptical about such claims, but Luis Ortiz had more information that would help set the investigation on the right track, the details of which are not only tragic, but infuriating. Surprisingly, when detectives spoke with Jose, the first name that was mentioned was that of Brenda Delgado, Ricky's ex-girlfriend, who was described by her family as a wholesome, loving person who held fast to her Christian beliefs and morals, and who was part of a loving family. He stated that she and another woman, 26-year-old Crystal Cortez, had approached him on the morning of September 2nd to ask if he could work on Cortez's car, since it had a problem with the engine. He agreed, and when they asked if they could borrow his Jeep for the day, he was all too happy to help out. He knew that the two women had to get to work, and so he felt that he'd be doing them a favor. They arranged to meet back at Jose's place after they were finished at work, but later that day, these plans suddenly changed. While waiting for the Jeep to be returned, he received a call from Brenda, who asked if it would be okay for them to meet at a local Chili's restaurant instead. This seemed like an innocent enough request, and he agreed, but when he arrived, he was perplexed to find that the car wasn't there, and neither was Crystal. The two women would return his Jeep to him later that same evening, but by now, he had already learned that Kendra's life had been ended, and that his car had been used during the crime. Before contacting the police, Luis Ortiz had confronted Brenda about the still images that were released, and she reassured him that it was a different vehicle that was caught on camera. It was a mere coincidence that it just happened to look exactly like his own. But she would then change her story and admit that Crystal had indeed driven the Jeep to Kendra's building 
since she was supposed to pick up illegal goods for a friend. It's safe to say Jose was not very happy about this. She assumed that something must have gone wrong in the process, and that Kendra had either gotten involved or lost her life as an innocent bystander. And it was then that he knew he had to come forward, since the identification of his Jeep could have had severe consequences. Jose told the police that after confessing to what the Jeep had actually been used for, Brenda urged him to keep quiet, stating that he could lose his US citizenship if the police found out that he was somehow involved in a crime, even though he wasn't. To ensure that his name would be kept out of the investigation, she suggested that he have the Jeep resprayed in a different color and she even offered to pay for this to be done. But this only further aroused his suspicions, since he could tell that Brenda was being manipulative, and he knew that he immediately had to clear his name as quickly as possible by confessing to the police, and that's exactly what he did. Police immediately set out to track down Brenda. When they finally brought her in for questioning, she claimed she'd never even heard Kendra's name before, and that she had no idea who she was, adding that she had a solid alibi for the time when Kendra was attacked. She supplied investigators with receipts from the Chili's restaurant and stated that Jose would confirm that she was there at that exact time as they'd had dinner together. Brenda then said if they wanted to catch who was really responsible, they should look more closely at Crystal, telling the police that she was with her when they got the Jeep from Jose, but that she let Crystal use the Jeep for the rest of the day. Next, they approached Crystal to get her side of the story and she had quite the tale to tell. She confessed that she was indeed the driver seen in the parking garage's security footage, but added that she had driven there under duress with her young son in the back as they'd been carjacked by an armed man who ordered her to drive to Kendra's building. But this was so obviously a lie. Investigators knew that this wasn't true since they'd studied the security footage thoroughly and at no point had anyone seen a child in the car. They immediately confronted her about this lie, but Crystal quickly came up with a different version of events not a very wise move when you're in the presence of seasoned detectives. But she now claimed that she'd agreed to drive the man to the building so that he could carry out a robbery, but it was all at the request of her good friend, Brenda. But she insisted that she knew nothing about the crime that took place and that she had no idea that someone had lost their life in the process. At this point, Crystal had now confessed that she was an accomplice, but she refused to go down alone, as she'd now implicated Brenda, stating that she'd only agreed to take part in the robbery at her request. She then explained that Brenda wanted the man to rob Kendra since she was jealous of the fact that her old boyfriend, Ricky, was now dating her. And the case was now starting to make a lot more sense. And it was soon revealed that when Brenda found out that Ricky and Kendra were dating, she found it impossible to accept. Police were now on to something, but let me tell you, this is only the tip of the iceberg. It was clear Brenda still had deep feelings for Ricky, but she would never have admitted this to him. Instead, she found ways to keep tabs on him, and the details of these activities are enough to send chills down anyone's spine. When Ricky had dated other women after ending his relationship with Brenda, it was only when he met Kendra that Brenda knew this relationship would be a long-term one. Since Ricky and Brenda had kept tabs over the months following their relationship, Ricky felt that it was the decent thing to do, to send Brenda an email and let her know that he was now in a committed relationship. Brenda gave him the impression that she was happy for him, and even suggested that they continued being friends. In Ricky's mind, this would have been a very mature response, and he must have been delighted that she took the news so well. But unbeknownst to him, Brenda was actually shattered by the news, and it seemingly had a very serious effect on her since she then started making plans, along with Crystal, to have Kendra removed from the picture. While Brenda kept as many details as possible a secret, Crystal had quickly realized just how much trouble they were in, and she decided to become a witness for the prosecution, in hopes that she would receive a lighter sentence for her involvement. She revealed that she and Brenda had started making their nefarious plans just two weeks after they met, when Brenda revealed to her that she wanted Kendra out of Ricky's life, even if it meant ending her life. This would have been enough to deter most people from continuing the friendship. But strangely, Crystal was immediately on board. It was clear early on that Brenda had become completely obsessed with Ricky and Kendra's relationship, to the point where it was affecting her everyday life. She'd failed to show up for several of her shifts at work, since she was too busy keeping track of Ricky, especially after she managed to gain access to his email account and learned that they'd been making plans not only to go on vacation together, but to start their lives together. She told Crystal that she felt as though Kendra was an imposter who had taken her place, 
giving us some serious insight into the rapidly deteriorating state of mind that she was in. With every passing day, her ill feelings toward Kendra only grew, and Brenda eventually made up her mind that the only way to get Ricky back was to claw Kendra out of the picture. First, she approached her cousin, Moses Martinez, and asked him if he would be willing to attack Kendra with a baseball bat, but he rightfully refused. Unwilling to give up, she then spoke to a friend of hers, Jennifer Escobar, with whom she proposed the same thing, somehow convincing herself that such an attack would leave Kendra in a coma, and that she could then start working to get Ricky back. Jennifer also refused. By this time, Brenda had already broken into Ricky's email account, and she was spending most of her time reading through his correspondence and keeping track of his movements. Jennifer knew that Brenda had become obsessed and was perturbed by the fact that she still had a copy of the keys to his house and even still had access to Ricky's bank accounts, all unbeknownst to him. When Jennifer refused to take part in her plans, Brenda suggested that instead of using a baseball bat, she could inject Kendra with something fatal, offering to give her a car, the substance that she would use to get the job done, as well as $2,000 for her troubles. But Jennifer once again refused. It was then that Brenda and Crystal met up. It would come to light that Crystal looked up to her new friend since she had a steady job, her own place, and made decent money, whereas Crystal was struggling to make ends meet as a single mother, who, despite working hard, didn't make much money at all. When the two women started planning the attack, Brenda gave Crystal $500 to help her out, as was evidenced by an ATM withdrawal slip that was later found among Brenda's possessions. But they now needed to find someone who'd be willing to get their hands dirty and they started driving around the area where Crystal lived since it was known to have a bad reputation. If they were going to find someone to do the job, this would be the place. Remarkably, they approached several people, all of whom declined their offer. It's just so wild to me that these two women literally just drove around a local neighborhood begging someone to claim someone's life. That's just wild to me. But the two eventually met a 31-year-old man named Christopher Love, he seemed more than willing to go through with the crime and even discussed different ways in which they could end Kendra's life. But they eventually decided that a firearm would be the best option since the crime could be committed quickly. Christopher would receive cash and illegal substances as payment. It was told by Brenda that she would introduce him to her cartel connections, to which he happily agreed. Having gone through Ricky's emails, Brenda knew that he and Kendra would be leaving for their vacation to Mexico that weekend. And having also learned that they would be making plans to move away upon their return, well, Brenda announced that the crime needed to be committed. And it needed to be committed right now. While Christopher awaited instructions from Brenda, Brenda and Crystal followed Kendra to learn what her everyday routine was like. They learned where she worked and on one occasion used binoculars to spy on her while she was in her office all while they were sitting across the street at a Salvation Army charity store. That afternoon, they followed her as she drove home and realized they could get into the building's parking garage by waiting outside and following one of the other residents as they drove in. The gate allowed just enough time for this to be possible. When they were certain of Kendra's routine after following her for a few days, they were confident that their plan would work. And on the 1st of September, the three accomplices did a dry run to ensure that everyone knew what they were supposed to do the next day. The following morning, Brenda and Crystal borrowed the Jeep from Jose. They then picked up Christopher, after which they dropped Brenda off at the Carrollton Library. Christopher and Crystal then traveled to Smile Zone, at which point Crystal actually left Christopher there since she had to pick up her son and nephew from school. She then dropped them off at her grandmother's house before returning to finish the job. The two then spotted Kendra leaving work after her shift, but lost her in traffic and ended up arriving at her building before she did. They managed to make it to the parking garage where they awaited to ambush her. And when she arrived, Christopher got out of the Jeep and followed through with the plan, all while Crystal stayed out of sight. They then made their getaway, drove to Christopher's house where he was dropped off, and Crystal then took the Jeep back to Jose. The entire plot was revealed to police by Crystal, all as part of the plea deal she made with the prosecution. In exchange for her cooperation, Crystal was given 35 years behind bars rather than a life sentence. Though that's not much of an improvement if you ask me, though you do have to admit she'll probably not even serve half that time before she's paroled. When Christopher realized that he'd been caught after the gun used in the crime was found in his car, he also openly admitted to his role, and Brenda was the mastermind behind the entire plan. But despite being willing to provide all the details of the crime to investigators, they didn't need him anymore. 
Crystal had already mapped out the entire plan for them. Christopher was then sentenced to capital punishment, since he was the one who actually carried out the crime of ending Kendra's life. By now, there was just one more missing piece to the puzzle, Brenda. She would put all these events into motion due to her refusal to accept that Ricky was happy in his new relationship. Once Brenda caught wind of how much trouble she was in, she decided to go on the run rather than face the consequences of her own heinous actions. During the seven months that she remained on the run, she was placed on the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list, and a $100,000 reward was offered for information leading to her arrest. But she was eventually tracked down in Mexico, where she was taken into custody in April of the following year. She would then be extradited back to the US under the condition that she wouldn't face the death penalty. She pleaded not guilty to all charges, insisting that she had an alibi for the time when the crime was committed, but she didn't. There was no doubt in the minds of the jury that Brenda was the one who orchestrated the attack on Kendra and they found her guilty, handing down a sentence of life in prison and she'll never be eligible for parole. This heartbreaking crime should have never been committed, that much is obvious. And thanks to the jealous nature of one person, Kendra's family's lives have been irrevocably changed for the worse. And even some of her coworkers have been badly affected by her loss. Tammy Potano was a close friend who had studied with Kendra and had remained friends with her after they graduated. And she stated that she now finds it hard to just be carefree and happy. You never know what may be lurking around the corner. She says that she's no longer as sociable as she used to be in the past. And this is likely due not only to heartbreak, but also fear. She added that the crime has had a negative impact on her marriage and that many other people have been deeply affected as well, including patients who knew Kendra. Her patients were also struggling to come to terms with the fact that such a loving and caring person had lost her life at the hands of three people who had never even met her, never even spoken a single word to her. When obsession and jealousy creep into someone's mind, there's no telling what the result might be. And in most cases, someone in that situation would eventually make peace with the fact that they need to move on with their lives. But Brenda Delgado refused to accept that she couldn't have what she wanted. And in the end, she'll pay the price for the rest of her life. But even with this exchange, it doesn't even begin to make up for such a loss of an amazing young woman like Kendra Hatcher. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and maybe check out this other interesting case I covered. And don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future uploads. You can also click that join button below to see new videos long before everyone else and help support the channel. But with that, my name is Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.